Um, Chairman Tsai, Professor Zhou Ellen from French office in Taipei. Good ab uh, good morning. My name is Eliza Lin. Eliza Lee. I am the leader of Sustainability and Climate Change Services PwC Taiwan. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very honored to attend the Fubang Globalization Forum 2022. So today in this panel discussion, we will be sharing the different strategies and the experiences of net zero around the world in different countries. And as we heard in earlier presentations, net zero and zero carbon emission is an ally goal for countries around the world. And actually, they are related to and closely affected by the development of the society, also um, the lives of the citizens. So we have to set up different net zero strategies and different implementation methods as we are approaching 2030 and 2050. So in the process for companies, we realize that even though it's a corporate goal, we need the government to provide a clear context and framework for net zero policies. We need the guidance from the government. So today in our panel discussion, the organizer also invited representatives from different fields, from different countries, to share the policies and implementations in different countries. Today in our panel discussion, we have four distinguished guests, four distinguished panelists. First of all, I would like to introduce Vice Minister Zheng Wensheng from Minister of Economic Affairs, Taiwan. I believe he's a friend to you all. and. Mr. Zheng has been working in the government, serving as a civil servant for more than 20 years. And she's been in this position um, for a few years and has, in, has been in charge of net zero and energy transition. So he is one of the key person, a mastermind behind the scene. And our distinguished, another distinguished panelist is Mr. Dr. Zhu Strong. He is the chairman of ECCT Energy and Environment Committee. And he has founded um, energy company. And also he is a co-founder and also chairperson of International Energy Assessment Evaluation Commission. Yes, he has a lot of recognition of titles. So please bear with me if I have um, mispronunciation. Also, Dr. Zhuang, Dr. Zhu Zhuang, he is also very experienced in green energy development. So we are very honored to have him here with us. Our third panelist is Mr. Alan Chuan, head of the economic department of French office in Taiwan. He took office just in September, and before coming to Taiwan, Alan also has experiences in many countries aside from um, French offices, um, French energy offices. So he's been to Abu Dhabi and in the Middle East area, Singapore, and many other countries, and he's very familiar with Asia Pacific affairs. So he has high level of understanding of Taiwan's and uh, energy affairs. So we are very honored to have Alan with us. The fourth panelist is Dr. Sun In Jun. Um, during the previous um, tenure of President Wen Tsai In, um, she was a consultant and advisor in the government, and she is a key person in promoting net zero and carbon neutrality. She is eloquent and prolific, uh, proliferate in academic um, papers, etc. So now we have 20 minutes for each panelist. And after their sharing, I will come up to the stage again, and we will have uh, more interactions and questions. So today, um, let us invite our first panelist, 
Zheng Wenzheng, Vice Minister of, of Minister of Economic Affairs in Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Li, uh, Leader of Sustainability. And today, um, Vice Minister Zheng, um, he had a video to share with you because he's been preoccupied by other um, affairs. And we will have Secretary um, General Zheng Wenchi. He will be with us um, in the discussion. Um, Chairperson Lee, dear moderator, um, dear panelists, distinguished guests, and also Professor Zhou from National Taiwan University, RSPRC. This is the one. So first of all, um, because um, I have to attend a budget meeting in the Legislative Yuan, so I wouldn't be able to attend the globalization forum today so i have to use um i mean i would like i would love to present to you the strategies and plans of the taiwanese government with this video so first of all the cup 27 held in egypt has come to an end and today the most aligned direction is that how can we together implement our goals together for implementation Around the world, more than a hundred countries have have ratified the um, agreement and have made an announcement that um, net zero is a common goal to be delivered by 2050. And in the process, there are several key steps that we have to pay attention to. First of all, we have to look for um, possible technology technology solutions in the past we could have commitments or we had expressed concerns on climate change and these concerns and ideas must become actions and be implemented with real solutions when it comes to solutions is never one single technology or one single government a company or a ngo usually all this take everyone that we have to join hands including the government the company and also private sectors or promotion campaigns of new initiatives so that we can deliver and accelerate our progress in net zero for implementation of course we look at pen points solution is solutions catered to the questions so we have to look at what are the pain points so actually net zero and just transition has been a popular topic we've been discussing this topic for a while so have to, we have to look at the source of carbon emission in taiwan we have several re several sources number one is of course um energy production it takes about 90 percent for non-energy production emission, it comes from industrial production, manufacturing, and a little part of it comes from agriculture or husbandry. So in 90% of carbon emission, 56 of this big chunk come from electricity, whereas 34% comes from non-electricity emission. Uh, mostly it's from traffic from vehicles from the combustions and also turbines for example um in industrial production um they need heat and they need um, other source of energy and in the process they emit a lot of carbon so if we can identify the sources of carbon emission of course we can improve most efficiently and the biggest part of it would be for uh, come from electricity production. So how can we reduce the emission of carbon in the production of electricity? For a net zero energy system, so far around the world, we have three key directions. Number one, renewable energy. And in the past few years, we see accelerated really high speed of development. In Taiwan, we have remote wind power and solar power. These are the two key trends for Taiwan. And in the past few years, we've seen amazing and impressive development. And remote 
when power if we have the base year as 2016 so far we have installed uh, more than 9.3 gigawatt and that is more than seven times of that if compared to base year 2016 and for remote solar power we have more than 160 um, devices installed um, and they are now um, being integrated into our electricity uh, power network by the end of last month in November we saw some new um, indicators saying that our wind power production has exceeded one gigapower and that is so exciting and we look forward to 2023 2024 2025 we hope to see even faster development of remoted wind power and as to other sources including thermal power marine power these are also um key development areas especially thermal power and marine power we see great potential in these aspects so we have um revised the law and so that we can better facilitate the development of thermal power especially in um, exploration of possible sources of thermal power also we are prepared um, for the um, legal support and we hope thermal power can be the third biggest renewable power supply in taiwan and marine power being the fourth in our uh, renewable power supply will also receive a lot of attention and resources for development aside from these by 2050 in addition to the renewable energies the power network must be stable so we still will operate on the basis of natural gas speaking of natural gas we need to reduce its carbon emission there are two ways number one um, we add we have more hydrogen in it we add hydrogen into the process and we are taking incremental steps with more experiments for example Siemens and Thai Power they just signed MOU and we will test in Xinda electricity site we will have hybrid um, hydro power production in Xinda site and also we work with Mitsubishi we are exploring the possibility of adding ammonia to reduce carbon in the process of power production in order to stabilize our power production in the future we are exploring the possibility of adding other forms of fuels to reduce carbon emission and also at the end of the chain we are adding we are trying to capture more carbon so that we can reduce carbon emitted when it comes to energy transitions of course that's people are concerned about our energy supply and it is incremental to our international competitiveness in the future our government have mentioned multiple times that in our GDP and economic developments, nearly 10% is used to import fossil fuels. So 10% of our economic activity is actually our energy imports. That amounts to around $2 trillion NT dollar, which is a huge number to us. When we generate more renewable energies, we can rely less on traditional fossil fuels. We can reduce our imports. We can use green energy to replace fossil fuels. We can also develop green energy industries. We can utilize solar, wind, marine energy, and other available energies on the earth to generate power domestically. In this process, we can reduce our import, 
and we can also produce these facility equipments and also capabilities to utilize and take advantage of this green energy. Therefore, renewable energies will be beneficial to Taiwan. Even though we are not gifted with abundant uh, traditional fossil fuels, we can use new technologies and stay competitive in the market with those green energy. If every country in the world is moving toward uh, green energy, we will be able to have a better competitive conditions in the world. In the future, especially in the near futures, we need to focus on particular energy developments. Of course, we need to rely on wind and solar on the left-hand side. We will also explore geothermal and marine energy. On the right-hand side, you will also see hydrogen power. Hydrogen is a new energy usage method. We hope that in the future, uh, hydrogens will be able and will be likely to replace natural gas. Within the renewable energy systems, when we have excess power generation, we can use hydropower to save some of the energy. We also need a large amount of energy storage facility. Once again, as we have said before, that certain um, renewable energy sources may be able to mix with natural gas or traditional fossil fuel plants in order to reduce carbon emission. In recent years, our governments are supporting um, solar power stations to combine with energy storage facilities. It can ensure stable supply of energy. More importantly, when storage facilities are installed in these power plants, we can have higher power conversion rate and higher power efficiency, which on-premise storage facilities we can also reduce our investments in infrastructures in the futures with existing power cable we can connect to more renewable energy sources because they have the proper storage facilities it will be higher efficiency for the power grid that we have in Taiwan they can reduce energy when we need it and store the energies when they have excess generations. On the right-hand side, you also see CCUS um, technologies. That's something we are developing fastly as well. Our governments have designed policies to support these efforts. Then we also ask our national corporations to follow these principles. Our national corporations um, are responsible for our utility and our infrastructure. For example, the Taiwan Power Companies and also the uh, the Taiwan Petroleum Company. They are critical to our economic developments. We request these national corporations to reduce their carbon emission as fast as possible by utilizing alternative energy and alternative technologies. The, net, uh, the Taiwan Petroleum Companies in the future will reduce their supplies of uh, natural gas and fossil fuel. We hope that in the future they can provide uh, different materials, for example, composite material for e-mobilities. 
and these are important targets for our national corporations in Taiwan. For our steel company in Taiwan, they need to think about how to reduce carbon emissions in the steel making process. Last but not the least, I have an important message we want to deliver to the public. Energy transformation in Taiwan needs a lot of efforts to transform existing technologies and existing industries. The energy sectors account for 90% of energy consumption in Taiwan. Therefore, we need to um, diversify our possibilities, for example, for electric mobilities. I think that we have the capabilities and abilities to develop these new electric mobilities. We need a lot of EVs, and we also hope to play an important role in the future markets around the world. These new developments will be smarter in the near future. As I mentioned before, our energy usage will be electrified in the future. In the past, our electricity is generated by burning fossil fuels. There will be a lot of changes and the different sources of energy uh, generation in the futures, such as wind, solar, and other alternative sources. We need to produce these power generation facilities in the future by ourselves. That's an also important sector we can develop for our economy in the future. We need to also develop services to manage national grid. And these service and equipment will be able to export in the futures. And we will have more possibilities and sources to access power. And it will ensure our energy security and energy stability. We can develop a new structure to produce power generation facilities and also electric grid uh, control system. We want to collaborate with other advanced economies in the world so we can develop and support new jobs and greener jobs. Once again, I would like to apologize to everyone here that due to a budgetary sessions in Congress, I am not able to attend today. Since most of us in the world would like to move to net zero by 2050, we need to think about how we can reach this target in the future. Net zero means that we have to go all in. We have to put all the efforts and make all the commitments into this process. In our daily life, we emit carbon. So how do we minimize and eliminate those carbon emissions is our common strategy and common challenges. I believe that Taiwan can offer solutions to the world. These solutions require more than technologies. It also requires policies, regulations, and communications. We hope that many of these efforts will accelerate in the future. Once again, we hope Everyone can join our efforts. Thank you very much.